An American doctor who visited the areas near the troubled nuclear power plant says the current situation at the site is safer than it was in Chernobyl. Robert Gale argues fewer radioactive substances are believed to have leaked. Gale is a pioneer of healthcare for radiation exposure. He led an American team that gave bone marrow implants to survivors of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant accident in 1986. He came to Japan last week. On Saturday, he visited areas between a 20 and 30 kilometer radius of the Fukushima power plant to assess the current situation with Japanese experts. The Japanese government has asked local residents to stay indoors to avoid possible radiation risks in that area. After returning to Tokyo, Gale told reporters on Monday the levels of the highly radioactive substance cesium detected near the Fukushima plant are less than they were in Chernobyl. So far, I mean the reason that, that the area around Chernobyl can't be inhabited is because um, there was so much cesium deposited that it has such a long half-life that um, over such a large area that um, it's not possible to clean it up. But the amount of cesium released at Fukushima so far um, would, impose the same, would not pose the same kind of problem. But he warned of the effect radiation can have on children. Gale said he had received questions from the Japanese government about the impact of contaminated water on human health. If a child, if a young child, an infant or an adult received the same amount of radioactive iodine, so the, the amount of radioactive iodine is exactly the same, the chance of the child developing thyroid cancer is between 15 and 30 times higher. And therefore we have, we have to be concerned with children drinking iodine contain, radioactive iodine containing water even, even though they drink much less. Robert Gale will stay in Japan until Thursday to advise the Japanese government. The accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant has forced nuclear power facilities across Japan to increase safety measures. The worry is they too could be crippled by a major tsunami. A part of Hikawa Town, Shimane Prefecture, falls within a 20-kilometer radius of the Chugoku Electric Power Company's nuclear power plant. The municipality has urged the utility to improve its anti-quake and tsunami measures. In Kagoshima Prefecture, the Kyushu Electric Power Company plans to increase the number of reactors at its plant in Satsuma Sendai City in the prefecture. A civic group against the plan has urged the prefectural government to withdraw the governor's appeal of the plan and have safety measures for the reactors improved to prevent any accidents. NHK has surveyed the 10 electric power companies that operate 15 nuclear power plants across the country, excluding the Fukushima Daiichi and Daini power plants. They were asked whether they have worked out new anti-tsunami measures following the accident at the Fukushima plant by reviewing their estimation of the heights of waves. All the utilities said they have new measures which cover all 15 plants. The Hokkaido Electric Power Company says it built the Tomari power plant on the ground more than 10 meters above sea level based on its estimation of the mass maximum height of a tsunami at 9.8 meters. The utility says since the tsunami that hit the Fukushima plant was much higher than this estimate, it has now decided to reinforce the seal of the entrance doors to the reactor building and other key structures to prevent water from entering. More than 90% of the surveyed plants have decided to introduce new equipment such as trucks with power sources available in emergencies and portable power generators. The Shimane power plant said it is considering installing extra power generators on the ground 40 meters above sea level. Some utilities plan to conduct drills to cope with an accident similar to that at the Fukushima plant. Kansai Electric Power Company, which operates nuclear power plants in three locations, says it conducted drills last Thursday, simulating a case in which a reactor has to be cooled using a simulator at the central control room after a power generator fails. The utilities have also estimated possible costs to install extra power sources and beef up safety measures. Kansai Electric Power President Makoto Yagi says the costs are expected to amount to 50 to 100 billion yen. He says his company will try to recover public trust in nuclear power by stepping up safety measures.
The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency says the priority at the moment is resolving the accident at the Fukushima plant. The agency says the utilities will then need to thoroughly reassess their anti-tsunami measures to prevent any similar accidents. Now, a rolling blackouts are affecting people's lives at hospitals. It can literally be a matter of life and death. Rolling blackouts have been affecting hospitals and other facilities that offer medical services. <laughs> Haruo Shimada came to this hospital on March 14th. Eight years ago, he was diagnosed with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, which involves progressive paralysis of the body's muscles. He'd been coping with the disease at home. But then his wife heard about plans for rolling blackouts. She rushed to have him hospitalized. Shimada has trouble breathing. If his ventilator's battery runs out during a blackout, he will suffocate. His wife says blackouts are a major problem because the ventilator runs on electricity. Preparations go into full gear. A hospital official confirms the day's blackout schedule. The area where the hospital is located was scheduled to blackout at 6.20 p.m. The staff checks if the hospital's equipment is properly run by a private power generator. Power goes out at 7 p.m., 40 minutes past schedule. The hospital's power generator switches on immediately. A nurse rushes to Shimada's room. The nurse says they've been instructed to check on him first because he will suffocate if the ventilator stops. The ventilator was working properly. The private generator can supply less than half the electricity the hospital needs. Despite all the uncertainty, staff are doing their best to protect the lives of their patients. A hospital official says they must cope with patients who normally stay at home, as well as people from areas affected by the earthquake and tsunami. The death toll in Japan's devastating March 11th earthquake has climbed to more than 11,000 people, with more than 17,300 still missing. The National Police Agency says the death count in Miyagi Prefecture alone is now 6,692. The figure surpasses that of the 1995 Great Hanshin earthquake. In Iwate Prefecture, 3,264 people have been confirmed dead, and in Fukushima Prefecture, 990. 8,030 bodies have now been identified, and most of them have been handed over to relatives. Police say the total death toll from the disaster.